What if I told you that the tragic failure of the Challenger shuttle was not a surprise? That in the dark hours before liftoff, engineers urged NASA to stop the launch, warning of a serious malfunction, and were ignored. That one man's chilling words to his wife captured the dread everyone was trying to hide. Something bad is going to happen. On January 28th, 1986, millions watched live as the Space Shuttle Challenger tragically broke apart just 73 seconds into flight, resulting in the loss of seven astronauts, including a beloved schoolteacher who was supposed to inspire a nation. But this disaster wasn't just a technical failure, it was a story of ignored warnings, broken promises, and a culture that valued schedules over safety. Today, we dive deep into what really happened that cold January morning, the difficult decisions made behind closed doors, and the lessons that still echo through NASA's halls today. After the spectacular triumph of Apollo's moon landings, NASA dreamed even bigger. They envisioned a space shuttle that could be reused again and again, a vehicle that would make space travel cheaper, faster, and routine. Imagine a space truck hauling astronauts and satellites into orbit on a regular schedule, turning space exploration into just another job. In 1972, this bold vision became reality with the official announcement of the Space Shuttle program. NASA promised the world a new era of spaceflight, one where launching into orbit would no longer be a rare event, but a frequent everyday occurrence. But building something this revolutionary wasn't easy. Nearly a decade of research, engineering, and testing followed. When the first shuttle, Columbia, launched on April 12, 1981, it was a historic milestone. The shuttle soared into space, proving it could survive the brutal conditions of launch and safely return to Earth, ready to fly again. But here's the catch. The shuttle was incredibly complex and expensive to maintain. And from the start, the pressure to meet ambitious flight schedules would create cracks in NASA's dream. Early shuttle missions were awe-inspiring. Satellites were deployed, groundbreaking science was conducted, and history was made as Sally Ride became the first American woman in space, followed by Guion Bluford, the first African-American astronaut. But listen to this, NASA promised Congress that the shuttle would fly up to 24 times a year, a bold claim given the shuttle had never operated at such a pace. This promise planted a seed of pressure that grew steadily and dangerously. Launches started to feel routine, almost too routine. The shuttle's upkeep became a race against the clock. Engineers worked tirelessly often pulling all-nighters, trying to keep the fleet ready. But managers increasingly pushed for on-time launches, sometimes at the cost of thorough safety checks. This push created an environment where warnings could be overlooked and risks normalized. The shuttle program's growing ambition was both its strength and its Achilles heel. In the midst of all this, NASA wanted to capture the hearts of the American public. In 1984, President Ronald Reagan announced the Teacher in Space program, a bold initiative to send an ordinary school teacher to space, inspiring millions of kids back home. More than 11,000 teachers applied, dreaming of making history. In 1985, Krista McAuliffe, a dedicated high school teacher from New Hampshire, was selected. She trained alongside astronauts, preparing not just for the technical challenges of spaceflight, but to broadcast live lessons from orbit to classrooms across the nation. It was the perfect symbol of NASA's vision. Space wasn't just for astronauts anymore, it was becoming part of everyday life. But behind the scenes, the program was racing against time, and not everyone believed the shuttle was ready for such high-profile missions. But that's not all. Beneath the excitement and public fanfare, engineers were growing increasingly uneasy. The shuttle's solid rocket boosters held a hidden danger, the O-rings. These rubber seals were supposed to keep superheated gases contained where the booster sections joined. But tests in the early 1980s revealed a troubling problem. In cold temperatures, the O-rings lost flexibility and sometimes failed to seal properly, allowing dangerous hot gases to escape. Several missions before Challenger showed evidence of O-ring erosion sounding alarm bells. Engineers at Morton Thiokol, the booster's manufacturer, recommended redesigns and extra safety measures. Yet NASA management, eager to keep the shuttle flying, pressed on with the flawed design, a classic example of what experts call the normalization of deviance, where known risks are accepted as normal. 
On January 27, 1986, a harsh cold front swept over Florida, dropping temperatures below freezing, a dangerous situation for the shuttle's O-rings. These rubber seals became stiff and brittle in the cold, threatening to fail at a critical moment. Engineers Roger Boisely and Bob Ebeling at Morton Theocle knew this was a recipe for disaster. They urgently warned NASA that launching under such freezing conditions was extremely risky, possibly catastrophic. During a tense late-night teleconference, Boisjoli and his team presented data and charts pleading for a launch delay, but NASA managers, frustrated with earlier postponements and under pressure to maintain the schedule, dismissed the warnings. Some even asked, should we just wait until spring? In a shocking turn, Morton Theokal's management reversed their engineer's recommendation and approved the launch. Boisjoli was devastated, telling his wife with grim certainty, something bad is going to happen. On the morning of January 28th, ice still clung to the launch pad, but NASA declared the conditions acceptable. Seven astronauts, including Krista McAuliffe, boarded Challenger, ready to make history. At 11.38 a.m., the shuttle lifted off amid cheers and excitement, but almost immediately small puffs of gray smoke appeared near the right solid rocket booster, a clear sign the O-ring was failing. At just 73 seconds into flight, a flame burst through the damaged booster seal, burning into the external fuel tank. The right booster separated unexpectedly, striking the tank and triggering a massive breakup of Challenger. The crew cabin separated from the main shuttle and remained mostly intact for some moments. Evidence later showed that some astronauts were alive and conscious after the breakup. Emergency air packs activated cockpit switches moved but the cabin fell from 65,000 feet at over 200 miles per hour. The impact was unsurvivable. Millions around the world watched in shock and disbelief as the tragedy unfolded live on television. Families, friends, and the entire nation grieved the loss of seven brave astronauts, America's first fatal spaceflight accident. President Reagan appointed the Rogers Commission, including luminaries like Neil Armstrong, Sally Ride, and physicist Richard Feynman to investigate the disaster. During hearings, Feynman dramatically demonstrated the O-ring's failure by dipping a rubber seal into ice water, showing how it lost flexibility, a simple yet powerful moment that exposed the core cause to the public. The commission revealed systemic failures, ignored warnings, breakdowns in communication between engineers and management and an organizational culture prioritizing schedule over safety. They issued nine major recommendations, redesigning booster joints, improving safety management, and ensuring engineers' voices reached top officials. They also called for astronauts to have a greater role in safety decisions. If NASA had listened to its engineers on that cold night, Challenger might have been delayed and disaster avoided. The O-ring flaw could have been fixed quietly and the Teacher in Space program continued. But NASA's culture at the time was different. Deadlines mattered more than safety concerns. This tragedy stands as a painful reminder of the cost of complacency and ignoring bad news. Though rumors of political pressure swirled, no direct evidence surfaced. Still, the desire to maintain appearances weighed heavily on decision makers. Challenger's loss led to a complete overhaul of NASA's shuttle program and culture, a shift toward valuing safety above all. It remains a solemn lesson. Space exploration demands respect, vigilance, and humility. The Challenger disaster was not a sudden accident. It was a failure of communication, judgment, and values. It cost seven lives, but taught the world a vital lesson. Rushing progress and ignoring warnings can have serious consequences. Today, we remember the crew and honor their courage as humanity continues reaching for the stars. With care, respect, and an unshakable commitment to safety, 